Welcome back into the Daily Dose. I'm your host, Jeff Hansen. As always, the show is brought to you by GiveEmHellBrigham.com and by CougarSportsInsider.com, part of the 24-7 Sports Network. Thank you to those of you who have already subscribed to the channel. We passed 2,000 subscribers earlier this week, and we are already roaring towards 3,000 subscribers now. That's the goal. Let's just keep stacking subscriber on top of subscriber. If you haven't done so yet, please hit the subscribe button, like this video, leave a comment, share the video, hit the notification bell, all the things that all the YouTube people say. Because look, we're trying to fuel the algorithm and grow this platform, and your interactions really help us do that. So thank you so much in advance for all of your support of the show. Today, let's get a little bit nerdy. Let's start talking about some, some offensive metrics that you probably don't hear about a ton because they're kind of nerdy. They're kind of hard to understand. You can't just throw them on a box score and put them in front of your face during a telecast and have the average person grasp really what that means. It requires a little bit more thought, a little bit more in depth. They're kind of hard to come up with. But we're going to talk about them because it really tells a story of how effective Jaron Hall and the BYU offense was in 2022 and the bar that Keaton Slovis and the BYU offense has to clear in order to maintain their standards in 2023. First and foremost, kind of a simple metric, yards per play. In 2022, BYU's offense averaged 6.86 yards per play. That's an insanely high number for a BYU offense that was playing shorthanded a lot of the time, that really didn't have a consistent running game to speak of. That's a really, really good number. That was a top 20 uh, yards per play number in the country. BYU's offense was clicking, but it was more than just gaining yards. BYU's offense was able to sustain drives and finish drives at rates that we haven't seen in Provo for a really, really long time. Last year, 38%, actually a little bit better than 38% of the drives, uh, of BYU's offensive drives went for more than seven yards per play. Think about that. 38% of the time, BYU was averaging better than seven yards per play. You're going to put up a ton of points if that's the kind of offense that you have, and that's exactly what BYU did. Uh, they averaged 2.8, uh, excuse me, 2.89 points per drive last year. That was marked uh, for, for 19th in the country. That's a highly effective offense. If you're scoring almost a field goal every time you touch the ball, you're going to win a lot of football games. You figure – even if, even if all you do is score field goals, you figure 10 possessions a game, you're putting up 30 points a game based on your averages. That's pretty darn impressive. If you remember back to the Bronco Mendenhall days, 24 points was kind of his barometer for success. If BYU could average more than 24 points per game, they were going to win a lot of football games. BYU's average, if you get 9, 10 possessions a game, they're right there at 27, 30 points per game. That's crazy. But it was the way that BYU did it, too. It wasn't just a defense that was you know, turning the ball over a lot and BYU's offense was capitalizing on a lot of short fields. In fact, it was quite the opposite. BYU's defense struggled. For as good as BYU is in these offensive metrics, BYU's defense was equally as bad last year. They were sub-100 in just about any category that you could think of. So the BYU offense really had to shoulder the load. They were pinned back deep in their own territory a lot. But even on drives when BYU had negative field position and had long drives, let's call a long drive greater than 80 yards, right? Greater than a touchback starting field position. They still averaged 2.65 points per drive on 80 plus yard drives. That's an insane number for BYU. That was 15th in the country last year. BYU did really well. They were highly effective. They moved the ball a lot, and they were able to finish off drives. My favorite stat that I wish was just the most normal stat, the stat that everybody talked about, available yards. What does that mean? Available yards really takes into account more than, than say, total yards or even average yards per drive or yards per play. Available yards looks at the number of yards that BYU could gain and then Puts it into a metric. How many yards did they gain? For example, if BYU gets the ball at the 50-yard line, there's only 50 yards that are available, right? They can't gain an 80-yard drive because they only have 50 yards to go. If they if they gain 25 yards, get a couple of t uh, first downs, maybe one big play, and then the drive stalls out, they only gained 50% of their available yards on that drive. 
compared to say if they get pinned deep in their territory on their own 10 yard line, there's 90 yards to be gained. If BYU gains 60 of those yards, right? That's two thirds. That's 66% of their available yards. Even though that's a longer field goal attempt at the end of the drive, that's probably a more successful drive. So available yards helps us understand how BYU does each time they touch the ball relative to where they got the ball to begin with. BYU gained 58.3% of their available yards last year. That was 15th in the country. 58% of the, the yards that they could have gained, BYU gained. That means that whenever BYU touched the ball, they were moving pretty well. I mean, if you think about what that means, if you say your average starting field position is the 25-yard line and you're gaining better than half of your off- of your available yards on offense, you're going to end the drive on average every time with at least a field goal attempt. That's an efficient offense that can take over from anywhere on the field and, and capitalize and turn any t- any any possession into a scoring possession. And that's really the goal of, of any offense. As hard as that is, BYU was able to do that for the most part with Jaron Hall, with Keaton Slovis. What's going to change in 2023? Jaron Hall did a lot, right? With his legs, he was able to extend plays, pick up first downs. He shouldered a lot of the load for the running game that, that dealt with some injuries and, and dealt with some inconsistency last year. Keaton Slovis has a really high bar, and he's going to have to do it differently. He's not the athlete that Jaron Hall was. Very few people are. I think that Keaton Slovis can make all the throws that Jaron Hall could. I think he's arguably more accurate as a thrower than Jaron Hall is. But he's not going to be able to extend plays and make things happen after stuff breaks down the way that Jaron Hall did. So in order for BYU to maintain their 58.3% of available yards gained, Keaton Slovis is going to have to get a running game going. He's going to have to be consistent in the passing game. BYU will have to play, uh, play, have more play action and succeed more off of play action pass. They will have to rely heavily on Aiden Robbins to consistently move the chains forward because you're not going to be able to rely on Keaton Slovis' legs the same way that you relied on Jaron Hall's. The offense has to be a little bit more well-rounded and everybody's going to have to do a little bit better on every single play in order to maintain the metrics that Jaron Hall and the offense put up last year. The entire offense was good last year, but Jaron Hall did cover up. Uh, There weren't a lot of warts, but what warts were there on offense, Jaron Hall helped cover those up. I don't think Keaton Slovis will cover them up in that same way. So the entire offense has to elevate their play this year. Otherwise, BYU will slip back just a little bit compared to the, the really high, really, really impressive metrics that they were at last year when you start to get beyond the box score and look at how things were going. Once again, thank you so much to all of you who have subscribed to the channel. Please take a minute, hit that subscribe button. Appreciate all of your your support so far. And until next time, give them hell.